for the 2019 Championship Women Big V title. A very good evening to all of those watching within Melbourne, Victoria, Australia, or even around the globe. We're here at Eagle Stadium to see the Devils and the Thunder. Steve Chalmers is my name, and I'm very honoured to welcome to the broadcast the Youth League uh, Program Head Coach at Werribee, Mr. Mason Rogers. Welcome. Uh, thank you, Steve. Great to be here. It's going to be an excellent contest, obviously, as I mentioned that these two teams well and truly earned their right to be facing off for the championship. And they're both going for their first championship women's titles. Yep. As you can see on screen, a very good crowd coming into Eagle Stadium. And we'll have a look at the journey to the grand final for these two teams. Werribee, who finished the regular season in third place, had a qualifying final and were knocked off by the Keelor Thunder 62 to 88 in the first week of the postseason. Georgia Tauschke had 15 points. Alexis Violatama had 12. But most importantly, Mason, no Alicia Jenkins and Sarah Ellsworthy very well held. Yeah, I think that uh, Keelor had a really great game plan and uh, it worked perfectly against the Devils in the last one. But hopefully, uh, Reese and Corey have made the necessary adjustments and we can go and see a different result tonight. Jenkins missed the last four contests of the regular season after going down, injured, in fact, in a game against the Thunder. Uh, she returned in the semi-final to defeat Hume City 73-51. to Jenkins the star in that one with 25 points and 12 rebounds. And then just last weekend in the preliminary final, they defeated Sunbury by three points. Maxine Allen with 19 points in that one and Viola Tama with a double-double. We flick over to the Keelor Thunder. As we mentioned, they had that qualifying final where they knocked off the Devils, 88-62. Aaron Bowman, excellent in that. 17 points, 9 rebounds and 6 assists. You're going to be hearing her name a lot tonight. Uh, 100%. She was honestly unguardable, and she's had a brilliant year. Um, she'll be one of the leaders for MVP this season, so it'll be really exciting to see her go up against the Devils. And then in a qualifying final just a fortnight ago, they knocked off the Jets as well, 80-74. to Bowman, as we mentioned, very good, 29 points. 11 rebounds and 4 assists. Alan Kett, 12 points and 6 assists in that one. As we're touching just on 2 minutes prior to tip-off, let's take a look at some of the keys to the game. We start with the Devils. Let's look at the, some key players. We mentioned Jenkins already, but Sarah Ellsworthy has been fantastic for the team this season. Honestly, she she's had a brilliant year. You know, the way that she can get into transition, come off the pick and roll and find people, score. She's uh, she had a brilliant year and uh, congratulations to her because she earned herself a WNBL contract in the uh, in the way there. Correct, that's right. Re-signing with the Adelaide Lightning off the back of an excellent Big V season in 2019. We look to Keeler. We mentioned Bowman. Nearly 24 points a game this season. Nearly 11 rebounds and 5 assists. She's doing it all for the Thunder. But more so, Anita Bendelowski playing second fiddle, averaging around 17 points per game has been excellent. Some of the keys to this game, rebounding. It's going to prove critical. It proves crucial in most grand finals. But you've seen the likes of Steph Collins and Aaron Bowman, who, you know, as we just said, 11 rebounds a game. On the flip side, 
Alicia Jenkins is just a rebounding machine. Yeah, uh, Keelor finished the season averaging over 10 field goals more than anyone else, and a lot of that comes down to their pressure on defence and their dominance on the glass. But I think Werribee were you know, up there as well. I think they finished third in rebounds, and that's going to be realistically one of the big battles. First in offensive rebounds, the Thunder. Second in offensive rebounds, the Devils. A key reason why these two teams are playing off tonight in the big dance. Points in the paint is the other one, and that is advantage Keelor. 49 points in the paint per game this season compared to Werribee's 34, and a lot of that has to do with Erin Bowman slashing. Yeah, uh, she is so strong, finishes well, you know, and can really pass. She's so comfortable with the ball in pressure situations, finding teammates. They cut real well off her. You know, it's um, a testament to the coach and the, uh, the system he's implemented. And if you're looking to advantage Werribee, it's the three-point shooting. Uh, just over eight per game at 31%. Keelor not as good. Six per game at 25%. So the Devils will be lighting it up from downtown in comparison to just pounding the ball inside for the Thunder. That's probably what you're looking out for tonight. Previous meetings, well, it's one apiece in the regular season. We touched on the qualifying final, which gives the Thunder the slight advantage. But there are two blowouts. Keelor won by a cricket score here back in round two. And then Werribee did the same when they went on the road to Killer Basketball Stadium. Yeah, the first round, uh, I don't believe either the imports or, uh, or Sarah are here for Werribee. And uh, again, I think a little bit similar to the final. Werribee's game plan just proved a little bit better on the game. But these teams are so well matched that uh, you know this, I'm pretty sure, will come down to the wire. So as you can see, players making their way onto the floor. Starters for the Eagles, Maxine Allen, Sarah Ellsworthy, Georgia Tauschke, Alexis Violatama and Alicia Jenkins. While there's been a change for the Keelor Thunder, Steph Collins to the bench. And more importantly, they're only suiting up eight players tonight, which is somewhat surprising for a grand final, Mason. Yeah, they ran heavily through these eight players during the regular season. And, uh, you know, it's a very, very experienced group, but... Yeah, I'm sure the coach knows best, and I'm not sure whether it was injuries or whatnot, but again, it's it's still a tough group to go play up against. Jenna Anderson misses there. Bandolovsky, the offensive rebound. Starters for the Thunder, Bandolovsky, Alan Kett, Aaron Bowman, Alexis Harrison, and Jenna Anderson. And we are well and truly underway. Game one, championship women grand final for 2019 as Maxine Allen gets the scoring underway. If you wouldn't believe it, a deep three-pointer. Yeah, she's really gone found her form the last couple of weeks. You know, obviously got uh, caught on fire, hit four threes against Sunbury, but it's fantastic for someone who works that hard. Jenkins picks the pocket out of Bowman, and it comes off Bowman as it rolls out of bounds. The Devils will take possession. We're going to turn this throughout the night as well. Tom Bandolovsky, the head coach of Keelor. However, a little bit of a change on the uh, Devils bench. Reese Potter away with the under-17 Australian team for the Oceania Championships. They've just won gold. Congratulations goes out to Reese. But therefore, someone filling his spot. Yes. Uh, Corey came across the club from Nutterwadding two years ago and has assisted Reese last year. He um, spent the first six months of this year in uh, Europe, but he has just stepped into the role. He manages the personalities and manage the emotions of the game so well and in finals basketball that's what a lot of this comes down to so big shout out to Corey Michaelidis obviously was the head coach last week filling in Reese Potter's role got them here and is doing the job again tonight as Jenkins makes her way to the free throw line and connects on the first one Had a storied career already Alicia Jenkins in her young career Spain Finland now making her way to Australia and is dominating in everywhere she goes. Yeah, she's. Um, it's so interesting how players can you know, make contracts off working hard, but that's her biggest skill. She just outworks everyone. Training, games, does not matter what. She'll find a way to go and make an impact. Bandolovsky, three, doesn't go. Fights her way to get an offensive rebound. Harrison does the exact same thing and puts it back in. That's three offensive rebounds already, and we're not even two minutes in to the contest. Ellsworthy. Short stops, turn around. That's the J. It's a quick 7 2 lead to the Devils. And the home side is loud, they're already loving it. Yeah, it's, um, it's fantastic to be able to pull out the grandstand and uh, get this many, uh, this many fans out to go and support. It just shows how much this program's been built over the last two years. 
Um, and a lot of that credit goes to Reese and the board, uh, Paul Jones, and the fantastic job they've done. No, I absolutely love it. You mentioned the grandstand pulled out. You can see that on the broadcast throughout the night. It's not often you get to do that here at Werribee, but when they when you do, the fans come in droves. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, it shows the sport with, you know, uh, Werribee is such a nice up and coming uh, coming club. If you know this, hopefully goes and sets the tone and then keeps building each year. It'll be a, a fantastic spectacle for years to come. Bandolowski at the line. Maxine Allen picking up the personal foul, first team foul. And I'll tell you what, in a cutthroat finals game, usually we're, we're talking about nerves early on. The Devils, they just look like they've slotted straight into standard practice. Yeah, look, they had two really good trainings led by Corey again during the uh, during the week. But as I said, Corey's, uh, Corey's biggest asset is that he just manages players. So I'm sure he has them all on the same page. Um, and on top of that, you've just got a lot of players that have experienced this. Maxine Allen was in the final two years ago. Sarah, Nudy... Uh, sorry, uh, Alyssa Jenkins, uh, uh, Alexis, and Georgia was in a Siebel Grand Final a few years ago. So there are a lot of big-time players on this roster. Now, you just just on that, you pre-warned me before we went on air, Nudie, and you've just already corrected yourself once. Let, let's just let the viewers know, obviously, you're entrenched in the Devils the Senior Women's Program and also the Youth Women's Program, but Nudie, Alicia Jenkins you're referring to, that is her nickname? Yes, yeah, so... Uh, Alicia, uh, when she was younger, um, you know, got picked up the nickname Nudie and loves it, and that's her preferred. Uh, she, that's what she likes to call it. She doesn't like being called uh, Alicia. And if I ever say X, and that's referring to Alexis. Um, that's her nickname. Wonderful. Alexis Vailatama, X. And if Nudie comes out, we're not being rude. <laughs> it's Alicia Jenkins. It did go and take a while to go and uh, get used to, that's for sure. <laughs> Here's Alan. Penetrating. Oh. Great little move, and it's a top finish as well. She really stood out last weekend to push past Sumbury. She's been a solid contributor all season, obviously just over seven points per game. Season high of 19, but that 19 was all more important in that preliminary final. Yeah, look, I was very, very fortunate when I was a player doing an ITP to train with Max, and she was the toughest person there, no doubt. Um, fundamentally, she's perfect, and yeah, I, I, th there are very few people you'd rather on your team. Here's Kett, two feet in the paint again, nearly stripped by Ellsworthy, did just enough to affect the shot, a long pass. Alexis Harrison had two hands on it but couldn't contain it. I, I know this is a basketball game, but could you imagine X going playing WAFL? Man, well, I can tell you there's, there'd be a few uh, big V stars that would be handy at another trade. That's for sure. We don't want to encourage it, though. No, not at all. We'd Abs rather them we'd, stay in basketball. We'd love them stay in our sport. That's what they're good at. That's what we love watching them do each and every week. Here's Ellsworthy. Pick and roll with Jenkins. Decides not to use it. Goes the other way. Falls short. Here's Bowman. Transition, but she's going to have to pull up. Kett. Nice hesitation, finds an open lane, can't finish. Jenkins the rebound. Cheap foul given away there by Jenna Anderson. Devils seem to be quite comfortable just coming in. You know, they're getting through their, uh, their staff, and that was a big difference in the last game. I think Keelor's pressure really got to them and pushed them out of their sets. So it's really good to go and see them just being calm, relaxed, and uh, doing what Reese does best. Uh, Reese's teams generally do best, which is executing and finding high percentage shots. Ellsworthy, drive, kicks out. Pisano. Um, Nice pass inside from yeah. Bowman to Anderson. The, it just the, was too much. The way that she throws the ball is phenomenal. Harrison gets the friendly roll from downtown. And that gets her going. Yeah, look, with someone who, um, if she hits her first one, can go and hit a couple. But uh, So that could be worrying signs for the Devils. Uh, Jenkins inside. Kick out. 
Thunder playing a zone. Yeah, There's a gone. runner. Jenkins, the offensive rebound. Always the issue with playing in a zone is it's very, very, very hard to box out. So, kick back out. Pisano for three again. There Third time. It's the charm. Kett up ahead. Bandolovsky, great transition work. Foul doesn't go. And that's going to be a lot of the game. You know, Keelor were by far the best team in transition uh, this year. But again, the second best was Sunbury, and Werribee did a really great job of keeping them just one transition basket last week. So. If their defensive transition can be as good as last week, then I think uh, they've got a shot. After the foul was caught on Towski, she was a little bit lucky not to be given a warning as she just disposed of the ball the wrong way, but uh, she's checked out of the game. Maddie Ball comes in for the Werribee Devils. A uh, player that came across to the club from Collingwood last Col year. Collingwood, yes. Yes, uh, watch got just, you know, Got into the gym, didn't expect any minutes, just worked her way into a really good rotation role and, you know, again, is a great, uh, a great ambassador for our club. As you can see on the broadcast, some lovely courtside seats for some number one fans. The, the Werribee Devils, the youthful, are out certainly in support, but that's a bad turnover. Harrison, and speaking of oh. the youthful, they are not just front row, they, they are on the court. They are well and truly in the action. <laughs> As we quickly get that little tacker to safety. Honestly, I can't say that if Harrison was coming at me with a head of steam that I'd go and stand in front of her and I doubt that kid would have been, <laughs> would have wanted to do the same thing. He's, he's young enough not to know yet <laughs> that he can do that. Uh. I'll tell you what, it was an absolutely tactical move by the Devils home crowd because Harrison had a wide open layup. Yes. <laughs> Watch go. Maybe something that Corey was working on <laughs> mid, uh, at practice on the <laughs> during the week. We have a stoppage in play just making sure that we're on the right track with timings, shot clocks. Obviously possession isn't an issue. Officials talking to some of the head honchos at Werribee just to make sure. Look, it doesn't happen we, again. We love them close by, but not too close. <laughs> exactly. Fans are the lifeblood of this game, so we loved it. Bowman exactly. strong to the hoop. Jenkins will be called with the foul. She does such a good job of coming back into your body, and you know it makes it. It puts a lot of pressure on the defense to go and keep their hands out. Um, I know one of the things that Reese really prides himself on their team, on his, the teams that he coaches, their foul discipline. They showed that throughout the year. I think they were, you know, the second or third best team in not giving up fouls. It's definitely going to be a matchup. We're going to be speaking about a lot tonight, and I was looking forward to seeing it. Bowman and Jenkins hasn't disappointed in this. And to add to the excitement on the uh, on the Werribee end. Uh, Jenkins going and picking up Bowman. That's a slightly different matchup, considering that uh, Jenkins generally goes and plays the five, but uh, definitely will be entertaining. Here's Borg Pisano. Ellsworthy swinging it round. Back foot on the sideline. That's a coach killer, isn't it? Oh, it is. Honestly, that uh, you go and get good action, force a closeout that... You'd feel Sarah, confident in Sarah to go and uh, blow by Harrison, but mm, give it all back. Here's Kett. Walks. So. so a couple of unusual turnovers. It's not common no. for these two teams. Especially not for those two players. You know, Ellsworthy is a big-time player, and so is Kett. She is, when the pressure gets on, she's proven to go and be fantastic. She... Uh, as much as Bowman and uh, Bandolovsky were very, very, very good in their um, game, I really do think that she was really the difference maker in their last meeting. And I mentioned earlier that we saw the thunder in that zone, which I thought was quite surprising because we, I was expecting more of the up-tempo press, get out and run. They're the number one team in the competition for pace. The Devils, arguably the opposite. They're second last. Yeah. So don't be surprised to see Keelor get out and run and gun. The Devils are more... Half-court oriented? Yeah. 
Go and get through their sets, execute, get the shots they want. They know they're going to shoot at a high percentage. Ellsworthy um, into Violet Armour. Step back. That one's short. Ellsworthy runs in, gets the board. Jenkins decide to start again through Pisano. Violet Armour. Oh, right idea. Tough inside look. Jenkins puts her hand up and says, that's okay. I didn't catch it. 14-11, just under four minutes remaining in this first term. Kett, inside, Anderson, strong to the basket. That one's a little short and a little tough off the glass, but they will retain possession. Anderson's done a great job all year of just being an absolute workhorse, you know, a great hustle player, um, really, really smart cutter, so wouldn't be surprised if she gets a couple of backdoor cuts, especially off Bowman drives. Sam Moody coming into the game for Alyssa Jenkins. We've also seen Steph Collins check in for the Thunder a moment ago. Steph Collins has improved so much this year. Um, I know uh, speaking to Liam Glascott, the uh, director of coaching up at Keel, or just he just lauded her work ethic this past year, getting in the gym, trying to do individual sessions to improve, and you know, with just improving that skill set, she adds another dimension to them, especially due to her size. Foul caught on Sam Moody. The Devils in the bonus for the first term. So Collins will head to the free throw line. Well, you spoke about a little bit of upskilling from Collins. I'm, I'm hoping for Liam Glasscock's sake he wasn't teaching the bank off the glass <laughs> for the free throw line. I mean, if it goes in, it goes in. That's all that matters, that doesn't is, it? That is true. <laughs> uh. Devils fans up in arms. Didn't believe that was going to be a Thunder possession. I'm sure you'll hear a little bit of that tonight. They were extremely loud last week, which uh, was great to go and see the atmosphere out at Sunbury. Violet Tama running the floor. Pisano, that one's good with the right hand. And he tried to stretch that lead back out to four. Kett, inside, Bowman. Two feet back in the paint, turns left. Tough shot, foul. She's so tough to stop, especially when you go when she goes into your body. I think she's shooting 66% or 69% inside eight feet this year. Like it's just her efficiency is amazing. She's just seemed to to craft herself to be that perfect prototype for championship women at Big V. Yeah, look, she can realistically, you can run her at the one, she can guard up to fours. You know, she's such a tough mismatch. You know, especially the way she handles the ball. You know, she's very, very crafty. Obviously wants to go left, but she's so crafty at going right, making a quick counter, getting back to her left. You know, she's an extremely complete player. Makes both there. And we'll see Chloe Hildebrand for the first time. We'll also see Lauren Jones for the Devils. As Pisano checks out for the Devils and Jenna Anderson for the Thunder. Keeler going to their 1-3-1 one, one zone. It's be interesting. Here's Jones. Now Towski. Ellsworthy picks up a dribble. May have got away with a double dribble there. Inside turnover anyway. Ball is loose for a long time. But the Thunder end up with it. And now they're out and running. Three on two. Collins. Strong to the basket. Was it too strong? It yeah. was. George Otowski just gets enough in the way. You can see on the replay screen, gets some good body position. Yeah, Collins just dropped her shoulder there. Honestly, Georgia just, at the end of the day, some players just come up with winning plays. You know, and that's, that's Georgia in a nutshell. Rebounds, defensive possessions, whatever it is, just really brilliant. Here she is again, top of the three-point line. Quick hands from Bowman. Euro step, and it was great D from Ellsworthy. She was mm. in a little bit of trouble as it was Bowman. Vandalovsky short. And, and that'll put him in the bonus. As it looks like Kett has picked up the foul. We'll get confirmation from the official. Yes, Ellen Kett. That's her first personal. Two 
two and a half minutes in the first quarter. Who's some of our leading scorers so far? Uh, for the Devils, Max goes and has uh, Max Allen has five points, and Danny Pisano has five points uh, off the bench. And then for uh, the Thunder, uh, Harrison has five, and Bowman has four. Tauschke's first one just rolled out. That one bounced. Got the back iron. Empty trip there for the Devils. Here's Bowman. Devils into their zone defense. They did a great job of executing their zone against uh, Sunbury last week. Uh, played of most of the fourth quarter and just forced tough shots. Um, and Corey just stuck with his guns. And uh, in the end, it worked out to be the winning formula. Shot clock was winding down there. Bowman got one up. Bandolovsky, excellent offensive rebound. That, the rebounding's well and truly on display in this first term, as is the quick hands from Bowman. Second time this quarter. Great find to Bandolovsky, who's running the lanes with her. As I know um, Corey spoke during the week. You know, she's just so elite. At, you know, she shoots a three-point shot at a good percentage, but she's so elite in transition. She's extremely quick and just effort the entire game. Viola Tama, Ellsworthy for three. Yes. Wow. It's exactly what the home crowd want to see is Sarah Ellsworthy getting yeah. hot. Oh, they Oh, they could be in a bit of trouble. It away. Kett does extremely well to find a way to remain inbounds and keep possession. Bowman for three to try and return favour. Doesn't. Viola Tama picks up a foul though for hooking. That'll be two on X. As you can see, just having a quick discussion in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. Yeah. I think it's what a lot of American imports go and struggle with coming over here is just uh, the slight different way that they call fouls over in the U.S. compared to here. Um, but, again, smart players will work through that. Steph Collins at the line. And another rebound for Jenkins. Finds Ellsworthy. They start their set again. This 1-3-1 one one zone's done a really, really good job of disrupting Werribee. Uh, not getting through their offense quite as well, but... Towski for three. As soon as I say that, then they knock down a three. <laughs> well, you, you're spot on, though. Bowman's quick hands at the top of that uh, perimeter zone has been causing some all sorts of troubles for the guards, but once they can sort of fight past that, get in the paint, kick it back out, that's where they're winning. And another uncharacteristic turnover there from Chloe Hildebrand stepped on the sideline. Well, that that's the beautiful thing about the 1-3-1 one, one zone is that it gives up space, but you know, generally you go and run a 1-3-1 one, one to try and force teams into shots they don't usually shoot or force them out of their offense. And as long as we can be patient, move the ball, still keep getting it inside, I think they'll go and find that they're able to uh, keep getting good shots. Oh. I, I think that's the matchup. The Werribee Devils will be looking to uh, target. Jenkins just got that extra quickness yeah. over Steph Collins. Um, honestly, she. Uh, I think with uh, with Jenkins' athleticism, she could have really done anything she wanted in sport. You know, whether it be 400 metre running or basketball or any other thing. She's just such a good athlete. A couple of power moves there from Bowman is. Just can't get the finish, and that is the end of one. Your Werribee Devils have the early ascendancy, 24 to 16. Let's take a look at some of the statistics from the opening quarter. There's Alicia Jenkins on screen as we head into the Werribee Devils huddle. Uh, as we had said, Max finished with five points. Uh, Sarah Ellsworthy finished with five. Alicia Jenkins, six. And Danny Pisano, five. So, you know, a good spread of scoring for the Devils. Uh, for the Thunder, uh, Bandolovsky finished with four points. Uh, Bowman finished with four. Harrison finished with five. And I think it'll be an ongoing trend in this game that we'll look at the rebounding counts because we've already touched on it pre-game and throughout some of the first quarter, Bowman grabbing a number of offensive rebounds. Jenkins cleaning up the glass as well. Yeah, watch go. Uh, Keelor went and finished with 12 rebounds, but they had nine offensive rebounds in that quarter, which I'm sure Corey will be speaking about in his timeout, whereas the Devils had nine defensive, three offensive rebounds. So. so there you go, the Thunder having 
multiple chances but find themselves down eight after collecting nine offensive rebounds. Obviously, a few of them going to Aaron Bowman and Anita Bandalowski, who we've touched on pre-game. They're the two, I'm thinking, for the Thunder to find themselves back in this contest. Obviously, it's only an eight-point deficit. But Bandalowski just loves playing Werribee. Obviously, she's averaged the 17 points per game this season, but against Werribee, it even goes up a notch. 21 points per game, and she shoots nearly 50% from the field. It's been on display already in this first term. She is arguably, I know she's she's good, but she could nearly be the underrated part of the Kiel or Thunder side. Most definitely. Their guard play is really key in this. Um, you know, if Bandalowski can get out in transition and go and find some easy points, that'll go and lead to a generally going string the three-point shot a bit better. Um, and Ket, same thing. If if she can get comfortable, she'll uh, she'll go and have a, you know, she could be really trouble. So real trouble. Um, but as you said, like, you know, the, the three-point shooting for Werribee, they've started off four from five from the three-point line, which uh, means that the Kilo coach may look to go and get out of his zone, but we'll see what happens. Would certainly please the Devils huddle at quarter time four or five from deep and they'll be saying well if you find that open look just continue to knock it down exactly Corey Corey coaches with uh, uh, one general rule which is the three is worth more than the two so I'm sure he'll be very 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 happy with that here's Collins finds a cutting Bowman inside again that one's a tough finish yeah could be the recipe to get her going as well and there's a lot of pressure in yeah. this backcourt the ball finally finds a guard in Ellsworthy and now with Hildebrand going down, they will be looking to push the pace. 100%. She did a fantastic job against wherever he last uh, time they played. Hitting open shots, playing in transition. Jenkins blocked by Bowman, but got a bit of arm on the way up as well. It's the first time we've seen Jess Slade in the lineup as well. The 16 for Werribee. Honestly, Jess has been such so great for culture coming across from Sunbury. Um, you know, rocks up to training, plays hard, is really experienced. Again, another player that's been in these big moments and I'm sure will go and help some of the younger players go and understand the gravity and how to deal with it. I was going to say that championship pedigree would obviously go leaps and bounds for the Devils to try and take that extra step and get over the hump. Jenkins, a pair of free throws. It's back out to eight. It'll be interesting uh, when Kiel will get back on defence, going back to more of their traditional pressure defence, because that's probably the thing that uh, Werribee struggled with last time. So uh, it'll be interesting to see if the Devils can go and adjust. Ket Bandalowski for three. That one was set and forget. That one was good from the moment I left her hands. More pressure here, double teaming Ellsworthy in the corner. Definitely not where you want to catch it. Here's Jones pushing up the floor, crossover. Back to Ellsworthy, and they'll just settle the tempo, get through their set, as we've talked about before. Jenkins, hard. Good. Picked you, up. Oh, sorry, my apologies. Uh, you bring up Jones, you know, such a great success story for Werribee. You know, has played here since uh, under 12s, uh, built her up. She's now bottom age 18s and getting, you know, really, really good minutes now, state champ women, you know. It's a testament to the junior coaches of this club who have been able to go and build up great players and it shows a really good pathway. Absolutely fantastic. It's what we want to be promoting throughout each association across Victoria. Obviously that pathway where you can start at virtually any age mm. and you can work your way up through one association. And we're seeing the Devils reap the rewards with Lauren Jones. We see Maxine Allen check back into the game, as we do Jenna Anderson. Here's Werribee just starting to try and match the intensity with a little bit of a full court man, but uh, it's certainly not as aggressive as the Thunder in this quarter. No, I think they've gone back to their 2-2-1 uh, two, two, press into 2-3 zone. Oh. There's a foul on the floor. Mm. That one's on Georgia Towski. Yeah. Mm. 
Corey just having some words with the referee, just checking the call. As you can see in the background of that shot, just some of the Devils faithful just pouring in. They're continuing to come in as well for this grand final game one contest at Eagle Stadium. And there's Jenner Anderson, as we spoke about at the start, you know, just has been fantastic all year. O rebounds, cutting, all the basic stuff the coaches love. Bowman for three. That's five in the quarter, and I'm just sensing that that is something that's going to get her going. That tough inside look to start the quarter, followed by a three. Honestly, she's a multifaceted defender, oh, sorry, uh, offensive player, can score from all three levels of the game. Um, would not be surprised if she's on an NBL 1 roster next season. It's a great point. She's been one of the competition leaders in championship women this season and would be an MVP favourite come the 14th of September on Big V Awards night. Mm. I think, you know, it's very, very awesome to go, to go and see these two teams because I think realistically, oh, at least from what I've watched, and I might be slightly biased, but I think uh, Jenkins and Bowman have 100% been the two standouts this year for everything they do for, the, uh, for their programs. And they've certainly done enough to get their respective sides to the grand finals. Another turnover and... Oh. Attempted transition, but it could go the other way here with Ellsworthy with ball in hand. That's a poor pass which Bowman could easily pick off, but there's no call. Anywhere. Let's go back to the Devils. And Aaron Bowman just looks a little bit perplexed, as you can see that on the sportscast replay screen. There's a timeout on the floor. Corey Michaelides just wants to talk things over. It's a two-point contest in favour of the home side, the Werribee Devils. What have you liked so far in this game? We've, we've had that opportunity for both teams just to sort of settle down, find their rhythm. And is it going to take some individual brilliance or is it going to be a team oriented just based off the first 13 or so minutes we've seen in this contest? I think as much as it's started off as a team oriented uh, process, I think at the end of the day you'll go and start seeing both teams start isolating some of their better matchups. Uh, you know, isolating Bowman at the high post of their first action or playing Ked off their little get action with the high, uh, when they throw the ball to the big at the middle of the three point line and play off it. Uh, for the Devils, they played so well at the high post with their two great imports. Um, I think you'll see more of more of that as the game goes on. As you can see, some of our highlights throughout the first quarter and change. Also, it's awesome that we have Sportscast Australia here. Like the uh, the product that they're putting on is fantastic and a great. Uh, it's great for the everyone at home who couldn't get down to the game to be able to see such elite basketball. Absolutely, we thank our production partner and broadcast partner, Sportscast Australia. It's great for. Well, I know the feedback that I receive is obviously we have some fantastic international players that hit our shores and hit our local courts and the fact that their families can see it back home wherever they are. Obviously, a lot of them come from the United States of America, but the fact that they can just, you know, send a quick message and say, hey, I'm on it X time on X social media platform, they well and truly embrace that. 100%. As we're back underway, Hildebrand for three. That one just rims in and out. Ellsworthy looking for a teammate. They've been sharp on the whistles thus far, just making sure that they're keeping this game intact and not out of control because I thought that was probably great hustle from Jenna Anderson, but there may have been just a couple of slaps on her wrist. Oh, look, they, these two referees have refed a lot of the, uh, the big V finals. have done a great job all throughout, so, uh, you know, uh, you trust them to go and get more correct than they go and miss, so uh, they've done a great job. Viola Tama going straight into Collins, step back. That one just back rim. Jenkins looked like she spiked that out of bounds. It's going to go with the Devils. There's going to be a discussion between the two officials, as we see on the replay screen there. 50-50 ball. And it's going to go in favour of the Thunder. But again, you saw there as we spoke about whether this is going to be, you know, as much as it is a team effort and uh, where we definitely go and play, you know, extremely disciplined team basketball. And that's not to say kill or don't kill or do as well. You know, you still see out of the timeout, Corey going and trying to isolate X on Collins to try and get the most out of that mismatch. Here's Bandolowski into Collins with the left. Bit long. Great box out there from Allen. Getting off their first 
first action. Uh, as they execute it so well. Viola Tama, the drop off to Allen. That one is right. swish. She did not uh, think nah. that was going down. And that did not hit anything but the net. And that was as perfect as it could have been. Uh, so it's been brilliant to go and see Max, who probably struggled for you know a couple of weeks with her shooting and her confidence with her shooting, to you know the last two weeks be you know as good as you could possibly hope. Ellsworthy out and running, two on two, stops at the free throw line, just long, tries to hustle for the rebound. Bowman takes it out of her hands, however. Bowman, great oh, find, just yeah. tip ball, and it's double tapped, and it's off Hildebrand. But again, shows the it shows the. Uh, the multifaceted game that Bowman has, you know, running currently at the four, being able to go and take the ball off the rim, come down, transition, you know, find someone with a no-look pass with her offhand. I mean, if we can get more players like that, that'd be very, very good. <laughs> Absolutely, it would. We love to see these types of players out on the court. Ellsworthy, two-man game inside with Jenkins. Harrison guarding her closely. Inside, oh. handle's been lost, tipped out from Bowman. And it's oh, a there we go. circus shot from Georgia Towski. As I said, big time player. She finds a way to get it done. Weaves her way through the Thunder defense with the shot clock winding down. Bowman gets the pick from Anderson. Now she's in the paint. Nice drop off. Blocked by Viola Tama. Bowman straight back at it though. And, and again, that's where you see we went and spoke about Jenna Anderson, how well she cuts off Bowman's drives. You know, it was a great defensive play by, uh, I can't remember if it was X or Nudie, but, you know, great IQ by Anderson. It's an offensive foul picked up there on the Devils. It's Viola Tama's third foul, yeah. which is somewhat important in this contest. But Grace, Corey, go ahead. I was just going to say, Corey's choosing to go and leave her in, which I personally I think is a good idea. Um, if she fouls, she fouls, and you can adjust. But if if she uh, if she doesn't, uh, you know, you're just wasting time of her being able to go and play. Well, it's all about that trust, isn't yeah. it? He's he's got faith, he's got trust in his players to say, look, you've got three fouls, you know what you can't do, and I have faith in you that you're not going to go out and get your, pick up your fourth foul very quickly. Exactly. And honestly, like that's the uh, that's been. It also shows with the other way as well. You know, not all the teams would be able to have their head coach go and leave and have an assistant come in and be able to function at that level. But the amount that the girls go and trust in Corey's ability, um, it, it says a lot for him as a coach and this group. We just had the same thing happen on the Keel or Thunder side. You just saw on the replay screen Alexis Harrison, the hard foul on Alicia Jenkins. She's picked up her third and she's straight to the bench. Again, each coach has a different opinion on those sorts of things. Some like to go and keep their players for the last quarter where they feel that it means most. Um, you know, there's no real right or wrong answer with coaching. It's more of a feel than a science. Absolutely. Five-point game in favour of the Devils as we are winding down slowly in this opening half of Game 1 of the Championship Women Grand Final. It's been an enthralling contest thus far. And here's Ket Bandolovsky. Thinks about it. Gets Viola Tama in the air. Now a runner. Gets and her own board. It's happened time and time again so far in this half. Hildebrand with the left off the glass. That one's a touch long. And there she is again. Jenkins cleaning up the defensive rebounds and then throwing one away. Just as we try to talk someone up. <laughs> the broadcaster's curse time. Exactly. And time again. Time out on the floor. The Werribee Devils, they lead 35 to 30 with just under four minutes left. In this half, we're going to jump in to one of the huddles here. We're going to see the Thunder on screen. Tom Bandolovsky just getting the troops, but here's the Devils. Again, Corey's got such great communication style with the players. You know, it's just very much, it's not authoritarian, which some coaches can traditionally be. It just speaks them like they're people, and the players really respect that. And it seems like Tom is doing the exact same thing with his Keelor players. Well, we've got a break in the play. Sporting is the official ball of Big V, providing Victorians with the opportunity to play more basketball 
more often sporting will make you a true believer of the game with a vast range of products to suit your needs head to sporting.com.au slash basketball dash victoria to shop the new range change basketballs at the beginning of this season by all feedback a lot wider and there's been some very positive feedback coming through from the, both players and coaches this season and we like to thank Sporting, the official provider, an official ball of Big V and all Basketball Victoria competitions. Where are you going back to their 2 3 zone again? Here's Ket Bandolovsky swinging the ball around the perimeter. Long two, Bowman. Honestly, I know it's something that Corey definitely spoke about during training. You know, this. Uh, as much as everyone goes and talks about the defense of uh, Keel, I don't think enough's talked about their passing ability. They led the league in assists this year, but the way they can zip the ball around and find you know, the most open player is really quite phenomenal. It is a testament to uh, Coach Bandolovsky for the system that he's put in place. Some more front court pressure is in the thunder. Another possession with the turnover. And that's the action they've got to watch out for. You know, Kent went and killed them on that last time, that little get action where they throw it. Player comes off trying to go and get it back. Um, yeah, where we need to go and sharpen up their defense on that one. Grace Funston doing her best on the offensive glass as well. She nearly gave them another possession, but the jump ball arrow did not go their way. And once again, Matty Borg steps out of bounds. That's the third or fourth time so far in this half that there's been an uncharacteristic foot on the line and it doesn't move no i'm telling you as much as people would like to tell you which they don't the court does not move no, it's a save on every stadium but again i think that's just as much as you have some big players you know i know there's a uh, there's a great level of competition between these two teams and you know just players trying to go and get their feel for uh for the game funston out to kit bottom of the net and we've got a tied ball game on our hands as we're closing in on half time. Allen getting around, oh, Kett. Move. Nice move, just doesn't go. Bowman the rebound, she'll be looking to run. Kett long to Bandolovsky, fumbles. And there was no room for error there. Not at all. But again, it shows again uh, you know, how well Keelor can go and turn a. Uh, can go and get into transition. It puts so much pressure on the defense if it's every single possession. Tell you what, I think turnovers will become a critical factor coming into this second half. It'll be a, a key talking point when both teams go to the rooms. Bowman, one on one with Ellsworthy, tries to cross her up, has an off arm. Now Kett, tapped away by Jenkins. Yeah. 10 on the shot clock when the Thunder get this ball back in. Timeout, Tom Bandolovsky. And that's what we spoke about before. Uh, you know, Bowman's ability to go and get right, wait till someone overplays, and she has the quickest crossover in the comp to go and get it back um, to her left hand where she can go and try and make a play. A brilliant contest on display here at Eagle Stadium. Game one, 2019 Championship Women Grand Final Series of the Big V. 35 apiece. These two teams, second and third respectively throughout the regular season, deserve to be here. They only dropped four games between, uh, they dropped four games each with a 14 and four record. As we take a look at some of the highlights throughout the opening half, there's Bowman, just far too easy. I think she's the one that heats up. We saw it just a couple of plays ago that you know, with the mid-range game, you touched on it before that she can do a little bit of everything. There it is, that mid-range jumper. Yeah, she started, she started 0 from 4 from the game, but she's hit her last four, so she's, uh, she's definitely catching fire. We're going to have to go and figure out some way to go and slow her down. Ominous signs, in my opinion, with Erin Bowman heating up. As I mentioned, just 10 seconds left on the shot clock when the Thunder get this ball back in play. Two minutes and five seconds remaining in the half. It's the Devils and the Thunder. Here comes. Oh, great call. Bowman, tough. 
Just a couple of picks, and Erin Bowman finds herself near uncontested under the rim. She'll be closing in on double figures. She may have eclipsed double figures. Yeah, she's uh, she's out to, I believe, 15 points. And there yeah, it is again. On that. Sarah Ellsworthy out of bounds. Fifteen to Erin Bowman, leading the game, heating up. They've sent Maddie Borg to her to provide a defensive assignment, and quickly she's picked up her first personal. Mm. That's going to be a tough miss, uh, a tough matchup for Maddie on the block. So uh, it seems like they're going back to Max Allen now, but even still, there's a there's different size mismatch here. Here comes the same play, Bowman back cut. Down, up screen, there's Bowman again. Oh. You picked it perfectly, and it's just the other side. It's a bunny miss yeah. by Aaron Bowman. Very uncharacteristic for her. Here's Violet Sama. Just picking up the scraps. Into Moody. Great kick. Back out. Ball. Oh, great block. Blocked. Man. This is what the Thunder want. Just some transition basketball up and down. We haven't seen it a lot so far tonight. The ball swinging around. Bandolovsky trying to get it into Anderson. Can't. No look pass from Bowman's too long. Now, I don't think Tom's very, very happy about that one on the sideline. Winding down the half, just 60 seconds left. Here's Pisano. Offense has dried up for the Devils a little bit here, so hopefully they can uh, get something going. Here's Allen. A high pick and roll with Violetama. Step back, had that look. Violetama for three. Wow, There's that's the offense. first basket. Just cleared out. Two-man game at the top of the three-point line. Work to perfection. Bowman back inside. Takes some contact. And Corey's going to go and use his last time out. The Thunder with the lead. Honestly, if you want to go and see a player go and take over, the fourth quarter of the Sunbury Werribee game was the X show. Uh, Alexis Vailatama, uh, sorry, my apologies for the pronunciation, was just on another level. There was um, nothing she could do wrong in that game. It was absolutely brilliant. If you want to check out that fourth quarter masterclass, jump onto YouTube, Werribee versus Sunbury Big V Championship Women. Search that, you'll find it. Head to the fourth quarter. And you're going to have to take Mason Rogers' word for it because it was a takeover. <laughs> I believe uh, she finished the half with only two points, but finished with 18, and I wouldn't be surprised if almost all 16 of them would have been in the last five minutes. Um, But honestly, both her and uh, her, like so many of these pl uh, players, have just been fantastic, especially giving back to the junior program. Um, Sam Moody assists one of our teams. Uh, Sarah Ellsworthy, head coach, has won. Uh, X goes and assists. Uh, uh, Jenkins goes and does so much work with, you know, domestic teams and uh, Aussie Hoops, trying to go and, you know, help out that way. It's just been absolutely brilliant people to go and have represent our club. Very inclusive in terms of helping out the Devils program. Oh, Violetama back-to-back tries. Puts the Devils back in front as we close in on half-time. This will be the final possession. Barring nothing goes wrong for the Thunder. Here's Anderson. Finds oh, Collins inside. Collins. Tries to use the left. That one was pretty. Can they get a quick shot off? No, they can't. That will be the half-time score, and we are locked at 41 apiece. Halftime, I want to chat to you about Sarah Ellsworthy a couple of times. 41 apiece, 10 minutes on the clock for the second half. We have had a very, very pretty and gritty first half. The referees have been right on it. We've had a perfect game. It hasn't got too physical. It hasn't been up and back, which probably would suit the Werribee Devils because they wanted to reduce that run and gun. We just saw it a couple of times as we sort of ended the second the second quarter. But Sarah Ellsworthy has been handling the ball a lot tonight. She's a great facilitator. She hasn't been dominant on the scoreboard. 
But you mentioned that she's helped out. She's an assistant coach. She's a head coach of some of the junior programs. She is a very busy lady. She is working full time with South Australia Basketball South Australia, and she's also an, a studying occupational health and therapy. Is yes. that correct? Yes, that is very very correct. Um, I'm not sure where she finds the time to do all of it, but honestly, the uh, you cannot go and question her work ethic. She's in the gym every single day, working hard. She's uh, taken one of our junior teams, and they've improved. They uh, are in the finals of the MUVJBL, which is fantastic. Um, and yeah, it's uh, honestly, it's just like same thing with uh, uh, Jenkins and X. You know, they're they're just the people that you want around their club, you know, around your club. Well, it's funny you say that. Obviously, it's something that every association looks at in terms of not only their Australian-based players, but certainly the international-based players. And it's it's been a shift from maybe five or so years ago where they've just focused upon, we want the best on-court player. And certainly in Big V, they've gone, look, if we can get player X from the United States and, and they just dominate on court and we can have every opportunity to win a championship, that's what we're going for and that's what we're paying for. But certainly the cultural shift and that uh, managerial and administration shift to say, look, that's an important piece of the puzzle, but we're looking for the culture of the person. We're looking for the off-court and what they can do for our association in addition to playing some great basketball. Yeah, 100%. And, uh, you know, Reese Potter, our player and coach development manager, um, who runs our Big V and our junior program. Um, honestly, that's been something that he's been so big on. And, you know, the amount that he's been able to do to go and change the culture since he's been here, and you see it, you know, this group's come up from Div 1 women. He's recruited great people first and then great basketball is second. And, yeah, it's meant the world to our junior program and clearly they've been able to put a great product on the floor at the Big V level as well. And obviously we're here at the Championship Women's Grand Final, but the same can be said for your men's program as well. Obviously, retention's obviously become a, a big thing in Big V as well for the, your restricted players and kind of cool as is a returnee and that's a big part of it because of his off-court stuff. A hundred percent. Like Connor is down at school clinics doing Aussie hoops, everything that he can to go and help out. And it means the world, especially for a lot of young kids who, you know, are just looking for a role model. Uh, you know, he provided that for so many young kids in the Wyndham area. Uh, Alicia Jenkins is the same. If you go to our Facebook page, there's so many great photos of all the juniors running up to go and congratulate her first because they think that she is the... The bee's knees. Um, uh, honestly, it's been brilliant for this club. Aaron Bowman's obviously a returning player for Keelor as well. You look at their men's program. Chris Carb is stuck around in the country as well. Obviously, his first season at Keelor. Um, but then you look at guys like Casey, Brandon Polk, Raheem Lemons are stuck around. Dylan Stythe from McKinnon is a host of female players. Courtney Duver stuck around at Sunbury for a number of years now. All of O'Reilly's returned. So... Retention of your international players has become just as important because there was a real sort of Ferris wheel for a number of years when it came to some international stars where it was one and done per se, but it's certainly becoming more and more prominent that these quality people but also quality players are coming back and wanting to play in our country. Oh, it's, I think it's also a testament to the... Uh to not only Australian basketball but also Australia in general like so many of the imports go and say how much they love uh, they love their experience here and we can put a good product on and it's fantastic as we're at half time of the championship women's game one grand final series it's 41 apiece between the Werribee Devils and the Keelor Thunder let's take a look at some statistics from the opening half Aaron Bowman has dominated the half for the Keelor Thunder with 15, with 17 points, I must say. 17 points, seven rebounds, has two steals, a block, an assist. The list just goes on and on for her. Anita Bandolovsky may not be shooting the ball extremely well, but she's certainly making her presence felt on the, on the glass, especially as a rebounding guard. Yeah, and uh, yeah, she's been fantastic. She's, uh, she's gone finished with four rebounds at the half, all four offensive, but... The thing with Bandolovsky is that as much as the shots may have not dropped, they're all been high percentage shots. So I'm sure coach Bandolovsky is not disappointed with that at all. Looking across to the home side, the Devils, they've had a vast array of scorers and it led, is led by Alicia Jenkins. As as we've come to know, uh, Alicia Nudie Jenkins can go and score in a multitude of ways and just makes her presence felt. She's only made, she's only shot three field goals, but got eight free throws, made all of them. 
and it's a great testament to her. She's unfortunately uh, this week has been in bed with the flu the whole week. So for her to go and show up, you know, put on this performance and hopefully it continues in the second half. Um, I'm sure Coach Bandolowski doesn't hope it continues in the second half, but I do. Um, you know, it's a great testament to her. What a competitor she is. 52%. The Werribee Devils are shooting from the field as a team. We mentioned uh, Alexis Harrison, the three personal fouls. Alexis Violetama with the three personal fouls. So it'll be interesting to see how that plays out for the remainder of the game as players make their way back out to the floor to commence their second half warm ups. We've just got under four minutes before the second half kicks back into gear. If you're waiting around and you're wanting to grab a drink or grab something to, to eat before this uh, half kicks underway. You can also check out the Championship Men's live stream that's happening on the Big V Basketball Facebook page between the McKinnon Cougars and the Hume City Broncos. You could, but I don't think you'd be as entertaining as this game. But, exactly, <laughs> when you've got a high calibre cracking 41 apiece game, I'm not sure we'll have many viewers going absolutely anywhere. Also, I know Bass Victoria, I'm oh, sorry, Big V loves to go and do their little statistic thing for the week. Um, just a little weird statistic. At the end of the Sunbury game uh, last week, it was tied apiece, and then where it became away with the three-point win. So could that be two weeks in a row? So you're calling potentially that uh, the Devils may secure a three-point victory here tonight? I'm saying it's possible. A yeah. lot of things are possible, but that things. is one of the things that may be possible. But if it does happen, it works in with last week's result when the Devils were tied at the half and obviously advanced to play in this three-game series, which commenced tonight right here at Eagle Stadium. You're on the Basketball Victoria Facebook page. Thanks for your company. Speaking of Basketball Victoria, and One Australia, a Basketball Victoria's official partner for apparel and footwear with a long and proud history in basketball and one has a total focus on the game and the people within it. And one has top to toe product offering, so there's always something available, whether it be for yourself or your squad. Visit andone.com.au for the latest and one apparel and footwear. What are we what are we seeing or what are we going to see in this third quarter that's going to prove very, very tactical and could potentially see one team run away with this contest? Um, I, I honestly think that it does go and come down to the point guard battle. I think Kett versus Sarah, which one can go and really stamp their... Uh, their, uh, their authority on the contest? Exactly. They're the words I was looking for. Um, both players are big-time players. Uh, both have had reasonable first halves, but probably not first halves that we've come to expect, but there's still a lot of time left for them to find a way. What is Sarah Ellsworthy's stat line at the half? Because she's been prominent in the game, but probably not on the stat sheet, I'd, I'd feel. So Sarah's currently got five points on 40% shooting. Uh, she's gone and finished with four rebounds, three assists, but five turnovers, uh, which she'll need to go and clean up. Has two steals, so uh, that makes up for it a little bit. But yeah, that'll be, um, I, I'd, I'd go and say that that's going to be where the decider is in this game. Averaging 18 points per game, four rebounds and four assists, shooting at 43% from the field this season, Sarah Ellsworthy. So can have a little bit of improvement to come in this second half if you're looking for a start to have a turnaround. Obviously, Jenkins, Bowman, Harrison, even Maxine Allen's been good. Georgia Towski's been very good on the defensive end, Yeah, we can say. I've loved... Daniela Pisano's activity from the three-point line. Honestly, you can't question Danny's uh, work ethic. She she constantly works hard and everything. And again, it's very, very good. You know, you see she gets down transition. She hit a great three, which is fantastic for her. Um, and hopefully we can go and see a little bit more of that in the second half. Second half about to get underway. As you can see there, we're deep into the Werribee huddle as they, they make their way out. Sam Moody, the drinks carrier, as you can see on screen. That's she a does new, everything. New role. <laughs> everything, Sam Moody. Add um, that to the resume. Exactly. It'll be the Keel or Thunder that get proceedings back underway here. Eagle Stadium, Game 1, Championship Women Grand Final Series. And it is deadlocked at 41 apiece. UCLA rips green. Oh, that was open. Tries to find touch late. And ends up being a touch long by Aaron Bowman. Great contest. 
Ellsworthy over the screen. Violetama. There's an overload on the far side of the court. Tauschke. Time running out. Four seconds left on the floor, on the clock, I should say. And she recognises that and goes straight to the cup and gets fouled. Yeah, Georgia puts so much pressure on the rim. She's so physical. Um, can go and get downhill. Is great at getting back into the body, which makes her very, very, very hard to officiate. Um, and Bowman picks up probably one that she'll be a little bit annoyed at. First possession of the half ended up being a very scrappy one for the Devils. Probably something that wouldn't please Corey Michaelidis. Uh, no, I'm sure he went and spoke about it at the half. But again, if he can go and keep the girls just focused and calm in this possession, I know he's got full faith in this group that they can go and get it done. One of two for Tauschke. Here's Bowman. Anderson nearly forgets to put ball to the floor. <laughs> Into the corner, Ket for three. It was a good look, just didn't drop. Violetama out and running. Bounce pass is too far behind Ellsworthy. And those turnovers are starting to count up for the Devils. Exactly, a lot of waste opportunities right now, so um, hopefully they don't come back and bite them by the end of the game. I feel as though the, the game's being played on Werribee's terms. It's a very slow sort of tempo. We've seen a number of, a couple of times the Thunder want to get out and really push the tempo and, and play their pace, but they've just struggled to be able to do so on a consistent basis. Harrison straight to the rim, that one rims out. But I feel Werribee's probably got the advantage. Yes, um, I was really fortunate. Uh, Coach Mike Leedy's let me come down in his training throughout the week, and I know they spend a lot of time working on their defensive transitions, being fantastic tonight by a couple of live ball turnovers, which is very hard to run defensive transition against. But, yeah, I, I think Corey would be happy with where they are right now and would feel comfortable. Um, Alexis Harrison picks up her fourth personal in that last play, and straight to the bench and the communication between coach and player was not a pretty one as she'll sit down for the majority of this third term. Oh, so she had so much uh, so much to their game in terms of her athleticism, her ability to uh, contest shots, get in transition as a five. You know, that's uh, that'll hurt them. Unorthodox play there from Jenkins, nearly losing the handle, then having to put something up quickly and very contested from Bowman. Here's Anderson trying to find a cutting Bowman. Had the lane back to the basket, didn't realise it. Bandolovsky for three. Black. As you said, she loves playing Werribee. Four points per game more compared to her season average in the three contests that she faced against the Devils. It's an interesting matchup. Hildebrand versus Jenkins will be interesting to see if the Devils go and try and attack that. There's Allen, Short, Jenkins trying to put one up against the tall timber down there. Here's the Thunder out and running. This is what they want. Bowman thinks about it. Out to Hildebrand. Cutting. Bandolovsky. Honestly, you've got to be so on top of your quarter court defensive principles against this team because as soon as you turn your head, there's a back cut. Great pass. Jenkins with the finish. Off the nice find from Ellsworthy. This game just starting to heat up a notch. Here's Kett trying to take her. Player straight to the basket. Great defense by Sarah. Hits the bottom of the backboard and bounces straight out of bounds. As I said, Reese Potter's just, you know, emphasized from day one that we do not want to go and give up fouls. And you can see how well Sarah's going to take to that. Just getting her hands out, forcing Kett to go and make a play. Um, Another and, turnover by Sarah yeah. Ellsworthy. However, just then the double team came quick. And she probably had that split-second opportunity to make that pass. And as soon as that went away, she was in a lot of trouble. Yeah. Uh, watch good. Again, that's, that was the difference maker when they played. Here comes the back pick again for Bowman. Um, Devils finally made the adjustment, which I'm sure Coach Mike Leedes is happy about. Um, but, yeah, that was the difference maker. They just forced Werribee into, I think it was 20-something turnovers and had 32 points off turnovers last time. Oh, Alan Kett 
A little bit too aggressive there, trying to find her way to the basket. This is a very fun matchup to go and watch Kett versus Ellsworthy right now. They are two comp elite competitors who just are loving playing against each other, I'm sure. Here's Allen. Kick out, Tauschke for three. Spot up. Oh, a good look. Violet Tama just plucks that one mid-air. <laughs> Give it to me. <laughs> Jenkins. Oh, that, that's going to be tough to go and guard. Great find. The high post, two-man game. Jenkins to Violet Tama. Finish with the left. They have a two-point lead. Kett out and running. Bandolovsky for three. That one doesn't go. Jenkins the rebound. And I think both teams go and show potentially the uh, the progression that Big V Women's Bass will start seeing where instead of having traditional fives, there are a lot more uh, quicker and athletic players that can go and run, you know, perimeter and post. You know, obviously Harrison can do that in um, for Keelor. Uh, Duva for um, Sunbury, she... She's so skilled. You know, I think that's where we're going to potentially see the big V women's basketball go. Yeah, it was a hard fall from Aaron Bowman there, as you see on the sportscast replay. Synchronised falling from the Thunder, but it was Bowman that took the majority of that contact. Jesus. She's up, thankfully, and, and looks okay. You touch on, you know, the modern-day fives that are more athletic, they can stretch the floor, becoming more and more sh perimeter shooters at a higher percentage. It's the way the modern day is going. It's inside or it's outside. It's nothing in between. Exactly. I think I think we've gone and seen a slower progression in the female game than we have the male game, but um, I think we're starting to see this in big V basketball now. So the Devils have once again opened up a four-point margin. Here's Bandolovsky. Trying to weave her way around Maxine Allen and then oh. just throws one into her bench. Admittedly, the girl on the bench was open, um, but I don't know if it was quite her range. <laughs> it's going to be interesting. The uh, Keelor's already in four fouls, whether that goes and comes to bite them later in the quarter. Whack, and there's Georgia again. Kowski wide open in that far wing. Oh, so I know, I know Coach Potter's gone and done a lot of work with her footwork and it's just really paid off this season. You know, she, um, her shooting percentage has gone through the roof and you, know, you can't leave her that far open. Bandolovsky finds it easy to go past Alan Batowski was there with the switch. Now Bowman searching, step back for three. That one's short, was blocked and oh. a little bit of the elbow is what Jess Baker has called. Check that one again. Not a lot you can see from that angle. Admittedly, the ref had a much better angle than we did, so uh, trust her call. Certainly lucky from Aaron Bowman's case because I don't think it was the highest percentage play to, to make. No, I can't say that uh, any coach is potentially one of their players taking step back threes, but Werribee had a great possession. It's unfortunate to go and end it on giving up, giving a shooter three free throws. Halfway through this third term, you got a five point margin to the home side. Jenkins, the handoff to Tauschke. Looking for the next one. Ellsworthy doesn't deliver, but Violetama with the nice pump straight to the bucket and one. Uh, and you can hear the Werribee crowd getting into it. They were so loud in um, at Sunbury, so hopefully go and see them sign to go. Oh, Jesus, just the athleticism. It's um, And again, just such a phenomenal person, puts in so much work. So Violetama for the extra. As there we go. Back out to that eight-point margin, which they had in the second term. Here comes their get action. They played really well against Werribee on. Catch straight to is. the cup. Assignment lost on the switch with Jenkins. Here's that early pressure trying 
to come again. Nice bounce pass from Viola Tama and the Jenkins. The foul just couldn't get that one to go. And I think that's a big adjustment that Coach Mike Leedy's made uh, in the first half when they went and got through the press and they went and had numbers. They kind of slowed it down. They tried to go back in the execution. It looks like they're trying to go and get a little bit more pace in the game, which could be uh, could lead to this run being extended. Just seems the Devils have a nice feel about when to push, when to slow it down, and and Keelor is just playing to the Devils' uh, their, their opportunities because I, I I obviously said in the second quarter that once the pace sort of got high, I would have said Keelor would would be pulling back into the margin, but it just seems to be so opportunistic by the Devils where they've had that couple of options and they've found Jenkins or Viola Tama right under the bucket for the open layup. Oh, so no. Uh Coach Potter communicating to the team from uh, from uh, um, from New Caledonia, and also Coach Mike Lee's. The, it's been the same thing the entire season. So we're just going to focus on what we can do, and the rest will take care of themselves. Um, also, there you go and see Bowman again with that quick crossover. Um, she's so hard, right? Quick cross back to the left. She's so hard to defend. Bowman up top. Great Try. pressure by Ellsworthy. And as I said at the uh, at the start of the quarter, uh, uh, X went and didn't didn't have a great scoring first half, but she's now up to eleven points. Um, oh, that would be kick ball, yeah. I'm not sure you can go and catch the ball with your feet. But, uh. well, it was a lot of hustle. It was tipped, tipped away from Alan Kett and it ended up just being scooped between her legs, as you can see here on the Sportscast replay. Oh, but honestly, again, you, as you said, you cannot go and question her hustle. She is, just like Georgia Towski, she's a big-time player and just makes winning plays consistently. Oh, Jesus. Nearly a wayward <laughs> pass from Viola Tama to Ellsworthy, but it gets away with it. Here's Tauschke. Moody presenting inside. Viola Tama decides against the handoff. You go and, and see the... Um, puts the be... offhand straight into Steph Collins' stomach, and she'll pick up her fourth personal. Yep, it'll be interesting to see. Yep. Coach Mike Lee is going to take her out. And we'll see Matty Borg straight it straight into the game. That's an unfortunate play there for the Devils. So this is interesting. We've got just under four minutes left in this third term. Alexis Harrison missed the majority of this third term with her fourth. And now Alexis Violetama with her fourth. So some key personnel on the on the sidelines and on the bench for both sides. Here's Bowman cutting, slashing. Great finish and with the left. She's strong. It's exactly why Keelor lead points in the paint throughout this season. Moody. The right hook. Sam Moody. Baby hook. There it is. Showing a bit of soft touch around the rim. Again, another player that's, you know, was in the finals two years ago with Sunbury, uh, against Sunbury when she's playing Boleyn, so I'm sure she's feeling comfortable in this environment. And she hits the floor there. As you said, the commentator's <laughs> curse. <laughs> well, Bowman tries to get one going. That one didn't. Devils just trying to up the pace a little bit again here. Ellsworthy with the left trying to get over Collins, but she just did enough to affect the shot. Jump ball is called. Anita Bandolovsky will return to the contest for Steph Collins. It'll be interesting to go and see how the, uh, now that Keelor is going to a smaller lineup, whether Coach Michael Eadies looks to go and isolate Alicia Jenkins, whether it be the low post, the elbow, a little bit more. Here's Ellsworthy trying to take off a double screen. Tauschke gets around her opponent. Great pass. Drop in Great to Moody. Drop. 
And her drop step is good, and we've got a double digit lead. The Devils making it really tough for the Thunder in this third term with just the nine points thus far. And again, you can see, oh, you probably can't see on the live stream, but Coach Mike Lead, he's constantly coaching his players after, you know, whenever they feel there's a bad call or anything of just next play, next play. We're just focusing on us and, um, you know, I think it's really worked to their benefit this game. Thunder just trying to buy a little bit more that they asked for there. And it's another cheap turnover. Jenkins goes baseline, Ooh. takes on one, takes on Jenna Anderson, the second. And it forces Tom Vandalowski to call his first time out of the half because we have a 12-point margin in favour of the home side. The Werribee Devils fans are up and about. You can hear them through some of the effects mics. This is the biggest lead of the contest thus far. And we talk the, about basketball is moments and there's runs. This one is arguably the most important run of the contest thus far. Well, as a lot of coaches go and say, the third quarter is the championship quarter and the Devils have just looked poised and found the right people in the right spots. Um, obviously a long way to go and this Keeler team's experienced enough that, you know, they'll, I'm sure they'll go on a run at some stage. However, you know, it's definitely a good sign for the Devils. It's been those moments, just the change of pace from the Devils during this run that saw Ellsworthy just drop one off to Viola Tama wide open inside the paint for the easy layup. The second time it was Viola Tama to Jenkins. They're the, they're the killers for the, for the opposition because when you can get easy points, get the scoreboard ticking over, the Thunders only had nine points in this third term. They've got a lot of questions in that huddle, as you can see there on screen with Tom Bandolovsky talking to his troops. And they're going to need to find some answers quick. 100%. On the point of easy points, it's, a, uh, it's something that Coach Mike Lee prides himself on is he you know, constantly emphasises that we win the easy points battles, the offensive rebound putbacks, the transition baskets, uh, you know, free throws. They're the ones they want to go and win because in these games when you've got two highly skilled teams, that can be the decider. 62 plays 50. I wouldn't be surprised if Keel will go back to their 3-2 zone right... Uh, sorry, their 1-3-1 zone right now. Just a slight confusion in terms of which way the teams were, <laughs> were going. Corey tried to get away with the cheeky one there, but Absolutely. unfortunately it didn't go, <laughs> didn't go as planned. Bandolowski, high pick from Anderson. Bandolowski gets job. around her opponent Ooh. very easily and ends up forcing some help defense to foul. That one's on Tauschke. As you can see there, some of the cheap hands. Mm. Fortunately, the second slide on the rotation. But again, just as, as you know, you went and alluded to at the start, you know, Bandolovsky just has a way of finding, you know, finding the bottom of the net, whether it be in transition, three-point shots, getting to the free throw line. She, um, she's just a flat-out scorer. She does do a great job to get to the free throw line, especially tonight. Hasn't converted on certainly as many as she would have liked throughout this contest. And here comes the zone. Tauschke sends Borg away. Now Ellsworthy back to Tauschke. Had her, seat, her feet set. Borg throws one up with the shot clock winding down. That doesn't go. Bowman out and running, but the Devils defensive. The transition D, as you mentioned earlier, has been excellent. Four players back there. Kett throws one up. Oh, Another Jenkins. great rebound for Jenkins. Leaning him up. That's 10 for her now. Borg out and running. Ellsworthy missed her. Gets... Tauschke set. Oh, doesn't fire. That would have had the Devils crowd up and about as we wind down this third term. Here's Kett trying to find Bandolovsky, trying to get their stars going as well. Bandolovsky and Bowman. Bowman's been quiet in this third term. Here's Hildebrand with the left. Just Another rebound strong. for Jenkins. Uh She's and cleaning them up, Alicia and Jenkins. And that's where not having Harrison, it, you know, it really hurts. You know, she's such a good rebounder. She's so athletic. Collins and Harrison on the bench Ooh. at this point of time. Two, 
In fact, we'll see Alexis Harrison check back into the game for the final 50 or so seconds of this third term. She sat for about eight and a half minutes. So she will be fresh, she'll be eager, but she can't be too eager. It'll be interesting to see if uh, Coach Mike Leedes looks to go and try and isolate her, try and pick up a quick foul. Although potentially in the zone it might be a little bit hard. Hildebrand gets this contest back into single figures. As we have a couple of possessions left in this third term, the Werribee Devils. Leads 62-53. Is Borg just finding a little bit of diff difficulty? Ellsworthy had Tauschke in the corner, couldn't find her. Moody tries oh. to half throw one up, half find Jenkins. It's get tapped out. Four seconds to go on the shot clock. Here's Ellsworthy oh. finding. A backpedalling Jenkins, three on the clock. Tauschke That's with the shot clock expiring it. and it's oh. in and out. She's had a couple of those so far tonight. She's been very good for the Devils on both ends of the floor. And she's still shooting 50% from the three-point line, so uh, definitely not going to complain about those shooting numbers. Tapped oh, away, job. Ellsworthy. Oh, was it blocked no foul. from Bowman maybe? That one's that a foul, was. however. Bowman getting into her teammates a little bit, trying to ask for some, some effort, some energy from her side. And that'll be three from her. She felt like she was the only one back there for a little while as the three-quarter time siren also got in the way of that play. So w certainly from the broadcast position, we didn't hear the siren go. So maybe they're going to have a discussion about either with when the siren went or how much time will be put back on the clock and I think it's going to be the latter. Honestly, it does amaze me with all the technology we don't have that our, sh that our clocks can't, we can't just plug the numbers in. I reckon that is an idea that Bass Victoria should look into. Well, it's certainly something there because obviously you've seen the professional leagues can do it. Obviously the NBL, we've seen that you just put it straight back on the clock and there it is. Not sure what type of technology is required. Although if anyone does go and use that, I expect 50% royalties on it. So uh, <laughs> get in contact with me. <laughs> so we're stop it, stoppage in play here because we're just making sure the timing is right for whatever may potentially happen after Georgia Towski's free throws. As you had mentioned, Bowman just, um, you know, uh, asking her teammates for a little bit of support. It's so uncharacteristic of Kilo. They have prided themselves on outworking every single team in this competition this year. Um, I'm sure it'll be a discussion point at uh, three-quarter time for them to try and get back. So we're going to have half a second remaining on the clock as Tauschke has two at the line. Coach Mike Leedy is putting faith in his shooter, not lining anyone up, getting ready for defense, trusting that Georgia can sink the free throws. I mentioned both Collins and Harrison on the bench just a moment ago. It's because Collins also picked up her fourth foul not too long ago, and the half a second expired without much happening. We've got a 10-point ball game on our hands. It was an excellent quarter from the Werribee Devils, as you touched on the championship quarter. Just gave up 12 points to the Thunder, who just look at it a little bit rattled to me. They're, we saw the on-court frustration just then by Erin Bowman to try and rally her troops. Obviously, Tom Bandolowski will be doing the same thing during this three-quarter time break. 100%, and it's so hard. You know, uh, The Devils have four really good bigs. Uh, they can run quite large, so especially only suiting up eight, uh, when both your bigs are in foul trouble, it puts a lot of pressure on you as a coach. Alicia Jenkins leading the way for the Werribee Devils, but there's, there's a number of role players on the stat sheet right now after three quarters. As you said, Alicia Jenkins, 18 points and 11 rebounds already, putting together a great double-double, which has been her, uh, her bread and butter the whole year. Um, Georgia Tauschke has 12, uh, X has 11, and on top of that you have multiple other players with uh, above four points. 
Uh, on the other hand, as we've said, Bowman has been phenomenal all game. 21 points, 11 rebounds, one assist, two steals, one block. Um, has just been everywhere. And Bandolovsky, although the poor shooting night so far, um, has still has found a way to get 11 points. Well, there's 10 minutes left in game one of the championship women's grand final for 2019. We mentioned at the very start of the broadcast that the Keel or Thunder only brought eight with them tonight to suit up. Two of those are now with the four personal fouls. Erin Bowman has three herself. Could that come into play late in the game? Obviously, if the foul game comes into play with only a couple of minutes left if we've got a tight contest and, and they're, they're needing to stop the clock. I definitely think so, especially in regards to uh, if you go and uh, watching the game last week against Sunbury, uh, the Devils did a fantastic job, as you even see on that play, of just isolating key players in uh, mismatches. And I think that what you might go and see is they look to go and attack that to go and get some of these players out of the game. And obviously we're not privy to some of the information surrounding some of their players, but I found that interesting, certainly walking in and seeing the Thunder roster come out with just eight. I thought, you know, you hope that that doesn't come back to bite them. And we're looking at a situation where two players are in foul trouble, obviously Bowman with three, but she'll be very tactical to make sure that she stays on the floor for as long as possible. Exactly. She's she's a big-time player. She knows what to do. I'm sure she'll, uh, she'll uh, you know, find a way to be effective without worrying about that. Well, basketball is a game of runs, and the Keel or Thunder are going to need one in the first half of this fourth term to see them in the game and that could yeah, be exactly what they asked for Alexis Harrison the offensive board straight back up two points and the foul that one on Sarah Ellsworthy and that's the thing that you gotta miss when Harrison gets in foul trouble she's such an elite offensive rebounder she's elite in transition um, really helps that team play the style they want uh, nearly 10 points and seven rebounds per game this season Alexis Harrison season high 15 boards and she can collect them in a hurry. And she's up to 10 points now. The Devils done a good job keeping off the boards. That's only a second, but again, I wouldn't be surprised if she uh, nabs a couple in this last period. Here's Borg, Jenkins, Towski. Ellsworthy popped from Jenkins. Top of the three-point line. Just a little bit long. Kett, good box out. Great rebound. They'll be out and running. Here's Harrison. What can they muster up now? Margin is seven. Kett, Bowman, two-man game. Ooh. There's a wayward pass to Anderson. Three-pointer up. Bowman, that one's long. Team rebound, dribbles out of bounds. Jess Slade checking into the game for Sam Moody. The contest is... It could be just the calm before the storm here I, I could be feeling because yes, definitely. it's just settled down a touch. The Devils making sure that they're playing at their pace. But anything can happen in this final term. Ellsworthy looking inside, finds Jenkins on the outside. She goes for three again. Oh, two the last possession. Kett out and running. Bandolovsky finds herself under the ring. Missed That's where it. they're their best when she's getting transition. Again, another offensive rebound. Tries to find Alexis Harrison under the cup. Just couldn't find her trailing left hand, and that one goes out of bounds. Maxine Allen coming back into the game. We've mentioned that the Thunder have missed Harrison's sort of X-factor out there, and now she's matched up on Jenkins. Forced two three-pointers in the last oh, two. Bowman block. It was excellent for a spot-up shooter in Towski, but going back, Harrison now matched up on Jenkins, forced her to shoot the three ball, and it just puts some confusion in, in her head. Not sure what to do or what way to go. Slade goes with the right hand. Oh, that, Bowman that hurts. Tries to collect it, fumbled out of bounds. You can see it visually. She is not happy with herself. Yeah, it's the unfortunate way that sometimes basketball goes. Oh, where are we going to get this in here? She's straight back on it. She's tip ball back into the contest, back into play. 
They just look a little bit uh, lacking a little bit of uh, effort right now, Werribee. So hopefully they can go and fix that up because uh, you don't want to go and give up you know, a couple of easy ones and turn this back into a game. I think they're talking about the shot clock. Uh, mm. Bowman went and tipped it and it's staying on 14, so I think they're wondering whether it should be 13 seconds. Devils with an opportunity to reload. Well, the Devils will have their full 14 in this possession. Jenkins back to basket, thinking about it, trying to get Harrison up in the air, getting her fifth personal foul. Turnaround jumper is long. Anderson the rebound. Here they come the Thunder out and running. Kett head up. Harrison now finds Bowman. I wouldn't be surprised if Coach Michaelides goes and tries to get X back in, uh, trying to go and get a little bit of size and a little bit more scoring. Oh, and here she comes. There we go. And speak of the devil, <laughs> you have called it absolutely perfectly because Alexis Violetama checking straight back into the game. Great minds think alike here at Werribee. And here comes the back pick for Harrison. It's too long. Five second violation. Tom Vandalovsky not happy. Keel or Thunder players slightly confused. I do go and trust the referees on this, but I have to go and say that did feel like the quickest five seconds I've ever been a part of. We'd have to go back and watch that on the, the replay screen in real time, but I would tend to agree with you there. Jenkins takes him in on, goes right. A lot of contact, but here come the Thunder. Bandolovsky and Bowman out and running. Straight, great great defence from Allen. Again, Bowman there's the that rebound. foul discipline. Oh, they passed the ball so well. Bandolovsky, that was a long two. Foot on the line. Jenkins may have gone and caught a knee to the uh, quad on that play. She looks like she's a little bit ginger. And this is exactly what the Thunder wanted to see drawn up because it's back to five, but a cheap foul by Alan Kett just Maybe sort of third. stops that momentum. As you said, third foul. And you can just hear it in some of the effects mics, the Werribee crowd just a little bit nauseous, a little bit worried, concerned for their team that they had that double-digit lead. It's now back to five. Yeah, I think um, hopefully we can go and get the crowd back into it because they're such a big part. They're such a big part of the game last week. So uh... Jenkins worried out of it by Harrison again. Viola Tama for three, needed that, didn't get it. Hustle from Allen isn't rewarded, but he's Great stripped. Hands. Harrison nearly stripped. One strip regained it. Now she's straight line to the basket, finds Bowman. Step back. That one's good. We are in a three-point game now. I think also you go and find that Werribee's just gone away from getting shots at the rim. They've gone very perimeter currently, and I think that's probably not their game. Very much so. They've been worried out of a couple of times where they wanted to have two feet in the paint. There's Ellsworthy once again trying to get inside, but can't exactly what we're talking about. Oh, great there's step Jenkins, through. the step, the finish, and there's the crowd up on their feet making some noise. Sam Moody doing a best dance on the sideline. And Bandolovsky tries oh. her best to make it quick but is a bit too keen on the offense. See rebound and that we'll is, pick up a foul there. There's always such a tough call as a coach to go and, you know, both players going hard at the ball. Um, you know, Bandolovsky probably was coming in from behind, but yeah, that's very, very, very tough. That's her first, so she'll be fine. Hopefully. <laughs> so Keelor making their move here. It just seems Werribee are trying to regain their groove, find their mojo back. Ellsworthy. Keeler up in the pressure on D. Oh, horns, she's so quick. Some horns action finds Ellsworthy open, but there's an offensive foul called, and that is on Ellsworthy. We'll have to check the sportscast replay for that one as we've got a great look at that. Yes, Alan Kett found some great position. That'll be her third. There's a number of players on three fouls for the Devils. Just Violetama on four. 
Harrison. Bandolovsky, long three, but she was set. That was short. Great rebound by Slade. Maxine Allen was potentially open for some transition movement there, and she's ended up finding the basketball, kicks it back out via Latama, set for three. That one wow. is always looking delicious. Back out to an eight-point game. Again, big-time players in here an hour and a half before the game, getting up shots, you know, stepping up when it matters most for the second week in a row. She's got a sweet stroke when it's on, and you saw it on full display right there, and... Also in the second quarter, and there's an offensive foul moving screen against Jenna Anderson. And now you can hear the Werribee crowd getting into it, which is fantastic. And the momentum has definitely swung back into the Devils' favour off a couple of big plays. It's all about moments. We've said it before. The Violetama three followed by the Anderson offensive foul there. And Viola Time is just, you know, again, another person who's really experienced in playing in big games, played at UCS, uh, sorry, USC in college, but represented the USA in the under-17 and under-19 comp. Um, so she's used to these moments. And she's got a heat check there. That one was probably not warranted, but a little short, a little flat. Would have had the house. Yeah, I think this place would have erupted. About. Bandolovsky finding Anderson. As they get action again, they're so good out of this. Sorry, my apologies for cutting you off. That one's short. Now the Devils out and running. Jenkins inside, tapped away. Allen puts the hand up, decides, oh, let's just settle this down. Four minutes and change left. We have an eight-point lead, guys. Oh, this is a mismatch. Jenkins inside. They're all doubling down, though. That's the house. Oh. Harrison up and about, Bandolovsky naked in the transition, oh. and she's missed. God. Again, you talked about moments. Those things just can suck the air out of a team. If the Devils are able to score here, this could put a dagger in them. Allen. Ellsworthy for the rebound. Oh. Ellsworthy has the hustle between Kett and Ellsworthy. Oh, and they called a foul on Ellsworthy. Teammates go to both players, but that. They've done a great job so far, the officials, but that one was probably the first time where I th thought maybe that was questionable. Yeah, but as we said, we've said it all night, these two players are absolutely competitors, and it's been an absolute joy to go and watch two high-level professionals do what they do best. Just under four minutes remain, game one, championship women grand final, Devils and the Thunder. It's the home side with the ascendancy. Looking to go to Keelor Basketball Stadium next week, Saturday, potentially Sunday as well, with a one-game advantage. Great defense. Tauschke, Again, the board. As I said, just comes up with big plays and big moments. Anderson picks up her fourth personal. It looks like Coach Michael Edis might be going to a timeout. Let me tell you, Tauschke definitely sold it on that opportunity. <laughs> And the sportscast replay screen, as you mentioned, timeout called. Three Potentially minutes. deserved an Oscar for that one. <laughs> God. Having a word to the official after that call was Jenna Anderson, just saying, well, what did I do wrong compared to what did she do right? <laughs> That's a great dump off pass there. Some third quarter highlights on display here. Jenkins, that was tough. Making the, a couple of big buckets during the Devils run. There's definitely been some highlights in this game one contest. Oh, honestly, you, you couldn't have asked for a better two matchups. Like, um, obviously, as you said, Sunbury had been the, uh, the team to beat all year and obviously coming off three state championships and uh, two in this comp. Uh, but these two teams have been elite the entire year. They uh, are so competitive with each other. It's such exciting basketball for Big V to present. Certainly some extra uh, additional help from a, an assistant coach, I'm assuming, in that timeout huddle. Yeah, so uh, on the bench, uh, Coach Mike Lee has got Liam Paul and Jesse Price. Jesse Price was uh, actually in the uh, playing group last year. Unfortunately, did ACL in the... Uh, 
uh, elimination or preliminary final, the first final um, last year down in Warrnambool. Um, so while recovering, she's decided to go and be an assistant coach. And then also has Jess Scannell, who's a uh, uh, used to play at Sunbury and has been a really, really, really great uh, voice on the sideline for the Devils this year. I was going to say, excellent vision there. You could see just the player become the coach and provide that extra help as Sarah Ellsworthy goes straight to the cup. I think that's been the biggest addition to Sarah Ellsworthy's game. Like, she's always been super athletic and super quick, but just being able to play at a second pace really helps on that. Slowed down, everyone thought she was probably going to pass it. Yeah. And, oh, there we go. This could be... That's another one on Anderson. That's her done. She's picked up three fouls in an, a matter of 90 seconds then. She had the offensive foul after the Viola Tama three. She had the foul against Tauschkin. She's picked up another offensive foul, and that is her night done. And this is what you were speaking about. Will these fouls come to bite them? Um, you go and see now both their bigs, uh, both with five, uh, sorry, four, mm -hmm. and Bowman still has the three. And that's exactly what they're going to attack. Tauschkin for three. That could be a dagger, but Ooh. didn't go. But... Viola Tama and Jenkins are going, to attack, are going to attack Alexis Harrison and Steph Collins for the remaining 2 minutes and 40 seconds because they know what's up for grabs. And it will be interesting to see what uh, Keel are doing these last 2 minutes because you're starting to get to the point where they're going to have to take some risks to try and bring this game back. Viola Tama. Oh, this could be a mismatch. Oh, oh there it up is. Up and under, left hand there. Steph Collins, 5th personal. She, she goes. goes for the block. Grace Funston's going to have to check back into the game. That's her night done. Steph Collins, as you can see on the Sportscast Australia replay screen. As I said, it was something that Coach Michael Edis did really well last year was picking out key matchups and attacking them in uh, uh, against um, Sunbury. Uh, Duva, Duva fouled out last game, so he's clearly going to the same strategy here. Viola Tama misses on the first free throw, but time is certainly in their favour and against the Keel or Thunder. Oh, and that could be an Off offensive rebound. The hustle shown there by Alicia Jenkins is exactly is what's been on display all game, all night, because it's a major reason why the Devils are in front. Viola Tama tries to step back. That one doesn't go. And it's where Bowman's at her best. In the open court, Hildebrand for three. They need it. They didn't get it. Bowman taps it out of Jenkins' hands. Time running out. This is going to be a big win for Werribee if they can hold on. Well, we'll Obviously. see how they got handled with the full court pressure because this is what they struggled with last game. Uh, sorry, last time they played Keelor. Um... Tipped away by Harrison. If if they win game one here, technically in the the season battle, it's two apiece. But two, but potentially two games left. Oh, 100 percent. And you know, obviously the back to back next week, uh, they'll go and have Coach Potter back on the floor, um, which would be fantastic for their preparation. Um, but all they can do is take care of what they what they um, have to, and that's potentially what they would have done tonight. Jenkins for three, just can't. Yeah. Can't provide that final nail in the coffin and, and something X, to get I believe, the, may have fouled out there. Something to get the Devils fans up and about one final time. You're right. Viola Tama cop one and then just threw Bowman out of bounds. <laughs> and that's her fifth personal foul. Third player fouled out of the game tonight. You can see uh, new, uh, Jenkins going and uh, getting all the troops together and you know, giving them some instructions before these last uh, last minute 50. You mentioned Reese Potter returns from New Caledonia with a gold medal around his neck. One of for, many. For game two of the grand final next, next week. Uh, Corey Michaelidis is 2-0, oh, mind you. Hey, I, you know, um, <laughs> he definitely is, but I'm sure Corey will go and be the first one to go and say that he would uh, much rather have the experience of Reese on the sideline and 
uh, I know he's so grateful for the opportunity and the amount that he's learned from uh, Reese, one of the you know clear up and coming coaches in uh, in Australia. Tongue in cheek, of course, but certainly Mikolitis has been a very admirable fill-in, if you want to call it that. Probably not the right term to use, but <laughs> he's certainly more than that. Yeah, he's a uh, Look, for someone to come in and go and coach his first two big V games, he hasn't coached a big V game as a head coach before these last two games, and to go and have the amount of um, poise and you know confidence in his ability and uh, trust in the team, it is you know the uh, the sky's the limit for him as a coach. He uh, is very, very, very technically and tactically sound, and his emotional intelligence is just amazing. Just under 90 seconds remain, 10-point game. Here's Tauschke. Pick from Jenkins. Now Allen doesn't take it cleanly and the ball bounces on that sideline once again. So timeout to Tom Bandolovsky and he's going to tell his troops we need to be almost perfect from this moment forward to erase a 10 point gap in just 77 seconds. But again, look, this has been Keelor's MO the entire year. They are a team that will go and pressure you for the entire game and try and force turnovers. And um, I'm sure Coach Michalides knows that. And he's telling them, don't foul, you know, just contest, keep, you know, keep doing the things that we do well. But, you know, if any team's going to do it, I think, you know, Keelor would be the one. We're into Tom Bandolovsky's huddle, also Corey Michalides. It's been a fantastic night out here at Werribee's Eagle Stadium. The series obviously moves to the Keelor Basketball Stadium next week. And we will also be moving across to the Big V Facebook page. Obviously with the Championship Men's Series wrapping up tonight or tomorrow. I don't have the scores on me, but it may already have wrapped up. But certainly stay with us for game two next week at the Keelor Basketball Stadium next Saturday night on the Big V Facebook page. Thanks to Sportscast Australia. Championship Men's Series looking like it's going to be wrapped up tonight. Tomorrow not required with McKinnon with a double-digit lead over the Hume City Broncos. The pressure is mounting here for Thunder and they're trying to mount the pressure Full court, here's Alan Jenkins. Werribee again, you know, a team that's so good at their execution that they're going to be able to chip away some time at the clock, try and find good looks. Moody, oh, step, great through step through with through. the left hand. That is good night, Keelor. We'll see you back at your venue next Saturday night. Bowman. And I mean, that's the championship pedigree you talk about, you know. Sam Moody, you've had to do it on the bigger stage already. Um, gives so much leadership to this group. Uh, the Devils are definitely hungry for this win, and there is another time that we've had someone step out of bounds. We're going to have to paint the lines a different colour or something for the next game. It's a timeout on the floor, so it probably gives us an, an opportunity to talk about it, probably at the wrong time of the contest. but. <laughs> It's just become laughable, hasn't it? Oh, it's... Uh, it's like seven or eight times. Yeah, and look, a lot of it comes down to nerves and players just trying to do things a little bit quicker than they're used to. Uh, feeling a little bit pressure, they rush up, so their footwork's not as crisp. But uh, I don't know, I wouldn't be surprised if both coaches were working on it at training on Tuesday. Well, it's such a simple thing, and I'm, I'm sure they'll, they'll make mention of it. Heading to Keelor next week, and... The Thunder have something to dig themselves out of because they're going to go down in game one tonight. Werribee will be full of confidence. Obviously, tonight they've had this amazing home crowd. Obviously, Keeler have brought a number of support staff and fans, and they've been excellent themselves because we can see it on the broadcast side. So you guys at home probably can't see it too well that Keeler have brought their own contingent of fans. They've been excellent tonight. But Werribee, the Werribee faithful have come out in droves, and they've been just... Fantastic on their feet at the right times, and they've got behind their squad when they when they were fit and firing. And honestly, runs. With, with the fantastic facilities we're blessed with down at Werribee, it's um it's great to be able to use the full courts, uh, to, uh the full uh facilities, bringing out the big stand, 
having the little bar down below, you know, it's, uh, it's brilliant. And hopefully we can just see more and more uh, opportunities like this. Sarah Ellsworthy continuing to attack the paint. And I do believe Kett may be also heading to the bench. Alan Kett finds herself on the bench, which will bring in the only available player left on the pine, which is Anita Bandalowski at this point in time with Jenna Anderson fouled out, Steph Collins fouled out, and now Alan Kett fouled out. So I know there's only 20 seconds left, so it won't matter too much, but no available players left on the Keelor Thunder bench. And funnily enough, Alexis Harrison, who was quick to foul, she's remained on the floor with the four personal fouls. But here's Ellsworthy. Only a, a couple of possessions left with the clock winding down. She continues Great to finds. attack the paint. Finds Jenkins and you can hear it on the mics. Where are we up and about? 22 points, 13 rebounds for Jenkins. Make that 14 rebounds for Jenkins and way to go and finish out the game. And that honestly. is it. And listen to the crowd. The final couple of plays pretty much summed up the night. Ellsworthy to Jenkins, it was brilliant. The crowd was up and about. Alexis Harrison, the miss layup as time expired. And ladies and gentlemen, game one, championship women, grand final series of 2019 goes to the Devils. Advantage Werribee, 77 to the Keelor Thunder, 64. Let's take a look at some stats. Alicia Jenkins, fantastic. Yeah, as we said, she's been battling the flu all week, but come in 20 points, sorry, 22 points, 14 rebounds. Uh, X went and had 14 points and six rebounds to go along with it. Uh, Ellsworthy finished with 10, Georgia Towski 12. On the other hand, Bowman was, as Bowman is every single week, elite. How, how good is that to go and see the juniors going and getting in with the girls? I was just about to say, you talk about community, you talk about inclusiveness. Down at Werribee, it's, it's right there, as you just saw on camera. We're in the centre court, and there are 50, 60, 70 young prospective basketball players in this area that are interacting with their fans, their heroes. The Werribee Devils Championship Women Players is a fantastic sight to see. Oh, see, that's what it's all about, isn't it? You know, they these girls are such great role models for you know our uh, our club, and I know obviously slightly biased from my perspective, and I'm sure every coach that, but I can't stress that enough how much this group has uh, you know impacted so many young you know hopefully future. Werribee Devils. That's exactly right. You can see it right there on court. They're your future players at Big V. They're your future stars. You've got your current stars. You've got the next generation. It's absolutely fantastic to see, but it's all Werribee Devils tonight. The Keelor Thunder were gallant. It was tied at half time. The Devils made their move in the third quarter, and they did it again in the fourth when they just rallied against Keelor's one last punch. And they ended up running out 13 point winners, 77 to Keelor's 64. As we mentioned before, Alicia Jenkins, fantastic. Georgia Towski, fantastic. Alexis Vailatama was excellent as well. And they did it as a squad. Yeah. There was every player stepped up tonight that stepped on the floor. And they can all go home extremely happy and confident that they can do the job next week. Yeah, it'll be a, uh, it'll definitely be a tough game. Keelor, the Keelor Stadium's fantastic atmosphere. So much, um, so much culture and feels that court. So it'll take a lot to go and get over them on their home floor. But again, you can only go and do what you do. So hopefully they go and feel confident after this game. So that'll do us from Werribee's Eagle Stadium. Just repeating next Saturday night, 7:30 p.m. Big V Basketball Facebook page where we'll, we will have a game two of the Championship Women Grand Final Series between the Thunder and the Devils. But tonight, game one, it was the Devils, 77 to Keelor, 64. Steve Chalmers, Mason Rogers, been on broadcast. Thanks to Sportscast Australia, our broadcast partners, Sporting and One Basketball Victoria. And from us, it's good night. A lot of fun as usual. With that, here's Collins finds a cutting Bowman.
inside again. That one. Don't adjust. Ket Bandolovsky for three. That one was set and forget. Has been fantastic all year. O rebounds, cutting, all the basic stuff the coaches love. Bowman. To go, to go and see these two teams because I think realistically, oh, at least from what I've watched, and I'm, oh, they execute it so well. By Latama, the drop off to Allen. That one is swish. She did not. Tipped out from Bowman. And it's oh, a there we go. circus shot from Joy Latama. Bowman straight back at it though. And, and again, that's where you see we went spoke about, you know, you're just wasting time of her being able to go and play. Well, it's all about that trust, isn't yeah. it? He's He's got faith. He's got swinging the ball around the perimeter. Long two, Bowman. Honestly, teams and, you know, just players trying to go and get their feel for uh, for the game. Funston out to Kent. Step back, had that look via Tama for three. Wow, there that's is the their offense. first basket. Very inclusive in terms of helping out the Devils program. Oh, via Tama back to finds oh, Collins great duck inside. In Collins. Tries to use the left. That one was pretty. As you turn your head, there's a back cut. Great pass. Jenkins with the finish off the night. As you turn your head, there's a back cut. Great pass. Jenkins with the finish off the nice kick out. Tauschke for three. Spot up. Oh, it was a good look. Violet Tama just. <laughs> Jenkins. Oh, that, that's going to be tough to go on guard. Great find. Keelor's already in four fouls, whether that goes and comes to bite them later in the quarter. Whack, and there's Georgia again. He really doesn't deliver, but Violet Tama with the nice pump straight to the bucket and one. Oh. Sides. Here's Bowman cutting, slashing. Great finish and with the left. Strong. Moody. The right hook. Is that Moody? Baby hook. Double screen. Towski gets around her opponent. Great pass. Drop in Great to Moody. Cheap turnover. Jenkins goes Ooh. baseline, takes on one, takes on Jenna Anderson. The no discipline. Oh, they pass the ball so well. Bandolovsky, that was a long two. Now she's straight line to the basket, finds Bowman, step back. That one's good. We are, it's exactly what we're talking about. Oh, great There's step Jenkins, through. the step, the finish. Finding the basketball, kicks it back out via Latama, set for three. That one wow. is always looking. I was going to say, excellent vision there. You could see just the player. One fine, good looks. Moody, oh, step, great through step through with the left hand. That is the clock winding down. She continues great to find. attack the paint. Finds Jenkins, and you can hear it. It's again. It's Sunbury. Violetama running the floor. Bassano, that one's good. Violetama, Ellsworthy for three. Yes. Wow. Really, really good job of disrupting Werribee. Uh, not getting through there. Offense quite as well, but Towski. still keep getting inside. I think they'll go and find that they're able to uh, keep getting good shots. Oh, I think that's I'm sure he'll be very, very, very happy with that. Here's Collins, finds a cutting Bowman inside again. That one. Don't adjust. Ket Bandolovsky for three. That one was set and forget. Has been fantastic all year. O rebounds, cutting, all the basic stuff the coaches love. Bowman. Awesome to, go, uh, to go.